right, guys, I'm back at it. Today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a um, dust collector boot for... I recently bought and set up this CNC router that I got from cncrouterparts.com. Um, we did some test cuts on some uh, half-inch plywood, and what they don't tell you is without dust collection, sitting in front of this thing while it's working is like going to a Gallagher concert. It became fairly obvious early on that um, our next purchase is gonna be some kind of a dust collection system. Um, I already had a dust collector uh, in my shop from Harbor Freight, and so we drug that into the garage where the CNC machine is and um, started the process of setting the dust collection up. I'm gonna add a separate video on how I actually plumb the dust collector in, uh, but I guess to get all that to um, interface with your machine, you need a dust boot that clamps onto your spindle and then provides a hose outlet for your uh, dust collection system. This picture shows the design uh, that's on the website. I think the initial, the intent of the design was really to make this out of plastic. Um, you could see that um, feature that cl clamps onto the spindle with a band clamp. Um, it has these little serrations that provide uh, fingers. Uh, basically, that part is slip fit over the shank of your spindle, and then a band clamp is used to tighten those fingers against that um, cylinder to hold the dust collector uh, boot in place. Um, the opposite side of it, there's a hole and an interface for a dust collection hose. And there's a secondary part that is installed using magnets to basically provide a skirt. I figured I'd have to go ahead and modify their design to get it to work with wood. Uh, so what I did was I just made a prototype part with some minor modifications of uh, their model. The first one I, ha I made, um, the wall thickness on these fingers was much too thin and I, it didn't even survive the milling process. Basically those little fingers, tangs, uh, broke off during, uh, I guess, the cylindrical uh, trim operation where you establish the throat of where, where you install the spindle. Um, so I redesigned it and thickened those parts up. I mean, the idea was that the wood's probably a lot more brittle than the plastic, and if you got them thick enough, uh, at some point they'd probably be strong enough to withstand some amount of compression caused by the band clamps. So in this picture, you see the result of the redesign. Um, you can see that the uh, fingers are much thicker in this configuration, but I still had the same issues where they were... Um, cracking and breaking off so uh, anyway I broke them all off as you can see based on this result I decided to redesign and reapproach how I was uh, creating that clamping feature that would attach the dust boot to the uh, spindle so I went in and modified the uh, provided Fusion 360 model to add um, this lug around that uh, bore where the spindle is inserted I went back afterwards and used a bandsaw to slit the lug so there was a relief in between the two lug halves. I drilled a hole to the lug and used a socket head cap screw and Mickey Mouse nut to um, clamp up the joint. I also used two washers on both sides of the interface to uh, protect the wood from being compressed. I used a pretty big uh, diameter fastener for this application and also a fairly good size uh, wing nut. Um, really it makes it easy to tighten and loosen without using any tools. So this is what it looks like uh, installed on the mill. Um, you can see there's a black skirt attached around the periphery of the secondary part. Um, basically that was some weather stripping that I got at Home Depot. I attached the skirt to the uh, frame um, using a pneumatic stapler. You could probably use a hand stapler also all in all this turned out to be a fun little starter project to give us something to do on the cnc machine um, you can see that this uh, functions pretty well here there's almost no um, dust that comes out from underneath it now um, really the going in objective was to try to create a dust boot for next to nothing um, you could buy these in the retail somewhere around $160. Um, you may be able to find them for less, but I guess the point is you could just make your own and 
out of stuff you have laying around and not spend very much money. I'll provide a link below to the website where I got this uh, Fusion 360 model and some other information. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, I'll have a lot more content coming up in the near future.